we're gonna have some laughs. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Cool Kids Lunch Table Podcast with PJ and Mike. Now find yourself a seat at their table. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Cool Kids Lunch Table Podcast with PJ and Mike. I'm PJ. And I'm Mike. And today we are recording from the afterlife um, because we're reviewing the long-awaited sequel to uh, to Beetlejuice. Uh, and I saw the movie on Thursday, the day it came out. I think, Mike, you went, what, Friday? I, I went Friday, yep. Mm-hmm. All right, so we've had a little bit of time to digest the movie. Um, so we're, we're ready to review this thing. And before we jump into the review, I just want to ask you this question. Going into the movie, where were you on, like, the excitement level? Like, how do you feel about the original Beetlejuice? Okay. And how okay. did that make you, like, feel about going into a sequel? Right. Um, number one, I um, I, I actually watched it on a self this in reverse. I actually knew the cartoon before I actually saw the movie as okay. a kid. So okay. I loved the cartoon. And when I saw the actual movie, um, I liked Wait, it a lot. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was actually I didn't like Beetlejuice the movie. I was a, kind of I thought he was mean, you know. Right. I was only like a kid, you know. But as right. I got older, I rewatched. You know, I it's one of Burton's best. You know, I love that yeah. movie. You know, Michael Keaton. But I love all the other, Alec Baldwin, all the Otho. I love that guy. You know, oh, the, the guy who played Otho is great. I <laughs> love that guy. Great. You know, um, all those you know wacky characters yep. and uh, you know. But yeah, I love the first one. And then going into this one, um, yeah, I was super excited because. And we're going to talk about it later. Like, this is a Tim Burton film. This is like, you know, him coming back. The past couple of years, uh, he's been, over a decade, he's been making the Alice in Wonderlands. And, yeah. you know, um, I think, his, in my opinion, his last great last great film was Big Fish. And then after that, you know, I didn't like the Alice in Wonderlands. I never saw Dumbo. Um, I, Big Eyes was okay. That was fine. But, um, but I didn't see Wednesday either. He's really behind him. His, but his prize... Yes. When he exactly. was doing well, '89, and he was yeah, doing he Beetlejuice, definitely and, passes prime. <laughs> yeah, definitely passes prime. I, so. I actually think the reason this movie exists is because he—I don't know if he directed the whole series or just an episode or two of Wednesday Adams. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that is what brought him back to Beetlejuice because Jenna Ortega is obviously in this movie. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but I also love the original Beetlejuice movie. I, I don't know if it's my favorite movie, but it's up there. I, I think it's great. Oh, yeah. I I always loved the uh, the way. They used like it's not really CGI. I guess it's stop motion in those movies, yeah. but like the mm-hmm. the snake and all the different uh, effects they did and all right. that stuff. I always loved it. I always thought it was it was it was done in a, in a quirky way. It was very fun to watch. Like it's not because mm-hmm. it's some of it's practical effects, some of it isn't. It's like a mixture of that and stop motion, but it's not CGI heavy. It it all looks tangible. Yeah, I, and I, I, I always loved the original Beatles. Yeah. And Michael Keaton, I think it's his best role. Yeah, yeah, well, you could definitely argue that. Yeah, I think it's his favorite role. Yeah, and I think what makes what I think I love about the original is that it's just like it's like one of a kind in terms of like yep. story and like it's just an original movie. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, Absolutely. it's so easy to like just hey, this is what it's about, you know? And it's hard to really replicate it. No one is. Thank God, no one. I'm sure at the time, I can't think of anything right now that they try to rip it off. You know, maybe what's that movie? Drop Dead Fred. You know, that one with yeah. uh, the guy, um, uh, what's that guy's name? Howie Mandel. Yeah. He's like a, a monster under his bed or some shit. Yeah. yeah this is kind of like the the friendly ever. I don't know what they call it, you know. <laughs> the kid I mean, version of it. Is still, I mean, it's just a class of its own. And yes. Going into this movie, I was, I had some uh, some trepidation. I didn't want them to no, ruin I, the I original was. and, and yeah. all that. And I, I mean, right off the bat, I'll say I liked it. I won't give my score yet, but I did like the sequel. Um, I like that they brought back as many people as they did. So I guess the first thing we should do is, uh, do you want to give like a quick recap of, of yeah, the plot? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do some spoilers. We'll try not to do heavy, heavy spoilers. Yep. Anything mm-hmm. super heavy, we'll give you a, a warning before we yep. say it, but mm-hmm. there will be some spoilers. Right. So this film is called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, just to <laughs> let everyone know. Uh, so it's a great name. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to do the, um, like I said, I'll kind of explain the plot. I just, I actually, I want to start off with this though. And I was so happy with this part of the film. It starts off with the theme song and opening credits. And yes. I just, it's, we are so, like, I'm a big, great fan of, uh, of opening credits. Not every film ne- needs, I think nowadays we just kind of 
they go right into things. Yeah, we just got, which I, I don't I like. like. The credit. When the yeah. opening credits came on and they started playing the theme music, the first thing I thought of, I said, oh, Mike, he's going to love this. Yep. The yep. first and, thing I thought of. Yep. And I always, and the reason why I love opening credits, folks, because it, it sets the tone. I really think it's a big, I think it sets the tone of the film. Yeah. So going to that cool opening credits kind of goes over the model and the, the town. So I said, just to kind of give you a quick synopsis of the film. So now Lydia, when I write his character, um, she works as like a, I'll say like a ghost hunter for television. So your house is haunted and she talks to you on TV and she goes to kind of check it out. She it has a really reminded me of Ghostbusters 2 when Venkman hosts that, that, yeah. that parapsychology show. Oh, school. yeah. It yep. kind of yes. reminds me of that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's funny. You, I want to say this before I forget. This movie reminds me, like you said, of Ghostbusters and also Frighteners, you know, with Michael J. Fox. Yep. Um, but anyway, yeah. So uh, when our writer's character, right, like PJ said, she has, uh, you know, she's kind of like a Ghostbuster-esque kind of character. You come on her TV show, da 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 She has a strained relationship with her daughter, uh, Astrid, which is Jenna Ortega, Wednesday. And they have a strained relationship. The reason why they have a strained relationship is because she thinks her mom's a phony. She's that she's a hack. And um her father died and she says, Well, you can see all these dead people. How come you can't see dad? You know, how come you can't communicate? And she has she has no explanation for it. Um, so that's where their strained relationship comes. Um shortly after that, um the Deet's father, I can't think of his name right now, but he passes away. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll I just like I said, of, Jeffrey something is his real yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, he passes away, so uh, they want to go um, back with Catherine O'Hara. You know, uh, the mom. The I guess she's. I think she's most well known for probably being the mom from Home Alone. And she might be more well known from Shit's Creek at this point. Oh yeah, yeah, and that yeah, depending on the generation for yeah. sure. So anyway, they go back to their hometown where Lydia grew up in that house. That's iconic. And um, during this time period, she starts to – Lydia, when our writer's character, she starts to see basically you know, images of Beetlejuice in her mind. And during this time, she's also dating a man who you think right off the bat you kind of get he's a bit um, – not completely being genuine, which yep. is Justin Thoreau, uh, who's basically – this is really a big spoiler here. He's kind of probably dating her for her money, her television stardom. Um, so anyway, that's kind of basically how things get in motion. That's how they get back to the hometown. That's where Beetlejuice kind of resurfaces because it's coming back to Lydia's mind. They're going there back to the the funeral uh, to, you know, to honor her father. Now, I don't know if you want to start where it kind of takes place from there, PJ, or we want to talk about some of the positives. Should we just kind of do it along uh, the way? Yeah, well, well, let's just – the first thing I want to say because we brought up that they're back there for Charles Dietz's uh, funeral. Mm -hmm. Now, we know the actor in real life. Mm -hmm. um, Turns out, not such a great guy. Nice fucking model! Um, Correct. <laughs> he is, I mean, to put it lightly, right? There's yes. all sorts of... And I don't even think they're allegations at this point. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. They're proven mm -hmm. to be true. All sorts of, like, yeah. pedophilia stuff and all that. And it's awful. Um, but in this sort of a movie... And I think you couldn't ignore the fact that he exists as a character. Yes. And... I won't give too many spoilers as to what they did, but I will say it was handled in a way that was both entertaining, mm -hmm. um, felt true to the spirit of the Beetlejuice movies the way that they did it. Um, doesn't bring too much attention to the actor because you don't want to have that much spotlight on a guy who did that many bad things, yeah. but still made it work. And I, I think that's something this film should get a lot of credit for finding a way to really work around that, that situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it would have felt, it would have felt off to not mention this character and not have this character. And if you would have put the guy in the movie, they could, there's no way they could have put the actor in the movie. I think no that way. was handled well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what so, they did, I agree with PJ, you know, they didn't do it back to the future too, where they had someone who looks like George McFly and, you know, fill in. So what they do is, I guess, they didn't wear where, like, you kind of saw, like, I guess, say, pictures of him, you know? Like, they're almost, like, you know, I don't say distorted, but, like, they never really did a close-up on it. Right. But you could tell by the silhouette that that's the right. the face of the, the husband. And, um, yeah, they did it. I got to say, they really handled it well. Like, PJ said, they're not, you know, uh, you know, condoning what this guy did. They didn't, like, ignore it. They said, look, this was a character in the movie. We can't just, like, write him out. Like, obviously, right. they did with him being dead. But, like, they still have him, or well, that character, I should say. 
present in the film. It's done really well, and it's almost like, if anything, a goof on the guy as well. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> so, um, handed really well. So I agree, PJ. Mm-hmm. So, so now that we're back in the town, right? This is where, I, again, I like this movie a lot, but there were a few pieces of this movie that I think fell flat. Um, oh, yeah. And it starts when you kind of get back to the town, in my opinion, when you get to the flat pieces, because now we're back in the town. We're starting to see more of the afterlife stuff. And you get introduced to uh, I forget her name in the movie, but Monica Bellucci's character. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I can't even remember her name in the movie. Hold on. Dolores. Dolores. Uh, Dolores. Yeah. 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 yeah, I happen to have I'm, I'm recording from the store and I have a Funko pop over. So I had a look. Yeah. her name is Dolores. We, we get introduced to this character and. Uh, spoilers for this part because I don't know how else to explain who she is without a big spoiler. It turns out Dolores is Beetlejuice's ex-wife from when he was alive. Yep. And they introduce this character, and they spend I feel way too much time on this character. She's searching for Beetlejuice, and she's going through the afterlife looking for him. And I guess she kills the dead people while looking for them. Like, she sucks their life out of them. Yeah. You get a, mm-hmm. you get a pretty good cameo from Danny DeVito out mm-hmm. of it. This, to me, is the first real negative of the movie, though, is this character, because she's in it so much for very little payoff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, let me go with it. I'll feed off with that. So, I think, let me just start with these quick positives. I think, like I said, opening music, I think all the acting is very oh, yeah. good. It yeah, doesn't mean that Monica Bellucci did a good, didn't do a bad. Everyone acts well. It's just a lot right. of these characters and these plot lines Too many characters. are just use. They're just they're pointless. I wouldn't even say that they're useless and they're pointless. And her character is basically you could edit her out of this film and it doesn't change anything. It. She's barely yeah. a plot device to move the plot along. Right, and I don't she, think you really yeah. needed to even give Beetlejuice in in this film. You know the way it's written to have him have a backstory. It didn't even add anything to it. No, it, I mean, so, I thought it was cool to kind of see where Beetlejuice came from. Yeah, I, I'm intrigued by that, but I, but I, you didn't need it in the movie because it's yeah. just it doesn't matter. It just yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't drive the plot forward. It's just a thing that happens. I think she was had a cool look to her. She kind yeah. of reminds me of Sally from uh, from yep. Nightmare Before yep. Christmas. You mm-hmm. definitely get Sally vibes from her when you see her. Um, acted great, played the part well. The part meant nothing. Uh, so that's really my first negative. But that also brings me to my my first and maybe biggest positive of the movie. Right. Well, hold it. we get to that, PJ. I know where you're going to lead to. So okay. I just so so folks at home understand. So right after they get back to their the house, you know, the iconic house, right, just to get things set in motion, then you see Monica Bellucci's character. Basically, she uh, – slight spo- so he – Bill Juice kills her back in the day, right? And now right. she wants to exact revenge. Um so that right after that scene, the next scene is Justin Thoreau uh, proposes to oh, right. Lydia, right, uh, to I marry her. Forgot about that. Right, right, right. And I another character I think is the waste is Justin Thoreau. Um, he wants to marry Lydia, and at this point, Jenna Ortega. I'm just gonna call him by their real names now. She goes off, you know, like oh my mom's gonna remarry this schmuck, you know, and she meets a boy. Okay, right. She has a girl's a boy. She has a like he has a crush on right so at this point you meet which i'm I, I, which i didn't really like in the film when we first see beatles i thought it actually was underwhelming it wasn't a big grand entrance right. it was just him sitting behind a desk um but anyway at that point he gets word that Lydia's back in town you know <laughs> and um you know he's interested in revisiting or uh, reuniting i should say with uh when writer's character and at this point um because of monica Bellucci is like Basically murdering – I know it sounds weird, like murdering people in the afterlife. I guess your, your soul is still, um, uh, I guess, alive in the afterlife. Yeah, I guess and like she's, it's a, yeah. Right, so you're becoming dead, even more dead. <laughs> she you're basically dead kills, dead. Her, she kills your soul in the, in the afterlife. Right. So she's able to suck your soul. So at this point, this other character that PJ loves enters, mm-hmm, which and is – This character – and I couldn't even tell you his name. I'm sure they said it. I don't even know. Yep. But I don't even know his name. But it's uh, it's Willem Dafoe, mm-hmm. and and Willem Dafoe plays essentially a detective, a police detective right. for the afterlife. And now he's trying to fi- he he's trying to find Monica Bellucci's character. He's mm-hmm. also at some point trying to find Beetlejuice's character. Yeah. We'll get into that a little bit later. 
He is a scene stealer, though, in this movie. He looks fantastic. The design they gave him. Yep. You know, because, you know, all the characters in Beetlejuice, when they're dead, their ghosts look like they're how they died. Yep. It, mm-hmm. And so you can see, like, his brain and stuff. It looks like he was an actor in the, in the yeah, real so, world. And he right. only played, like, action-y cop kind of roles. Yeah, so like a detective. He like, yeah. He's a detective. I mean, what a scene stealer. Everything this guy does is entertaining. If you were to ask me if he needs to be in this movie, the answer is probably he doesn't. He doesn't add much to the plot, but he is such a great character that I hope they make something a spinoff on him. Like, I want to watch this guy do more detecting in the Yeah, that could work. That could work. That could work. Such a great character, acted so well, a great look. I mean, I think he steals the movie. Um, It's a shame that they didn't make him more important. Right. Well I, well, I guess we'll get into it. Cause, and I guess I'll get, I'll, then I'll get into, I guess we'll kind of get how we'll put the rest of the plot out there. Yeah. So long story short, Lydia does, oh my God, Jenna Ortega, um, she starts dating this boy. Long story short, this is a pretty major uh, spoiler it's a, right here. So, it's a pretty major spoiler, but you will figure it out the minute yeah. you meet this character. Yeah, there is so, no, right. there's so, no hidden mystery here. Right. So, right. So he's actually dead. So now she now possesses the power to see the dead, um, Jenna Ortega. So this boy makes a you know um, a deal Basically with her. Tricks her into yes. He wants to stay alive, and he and, tricks her into going to the afterlife with him so they can find a way to keep him alive. Right. Exactly. And now Lydia, when Arada's character finds out about this, and she gets Beetlejuice, agrees to make she makes a deal with Beetlejuice. Look, I'll marry you, Beetlejuice, if you can help save my daughter. In the you know in the uh, afterlife, and so at this time you have when our writer Beetlejuice trying to find Jenna Ortega, you have Monica Bellucci trying to uh, um, find Ben Hughes, and then you have Willem Dafoe trying, trying to, find, to right. find Beetlejuice, and he's trying to find right. Monica Bellucci, and exactly. it, it's, there's just a lot of people looking for each other because now you also have in in a sense you have Justin Thoreau looking for Lydia because they're supposed to get married. And so he's in the streets. You ha- There's a lot of people looking for shit in this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, it never quite comes to a head where everyone winds up. It just, they miss yeah. a little bit. Right. So with that, PJ, I'll just get into my, you know, my negatives now. So okay. like I said, everything else we said, the acting is great. The music's great. You know, Michael Keaton's, everyone's acting is great. You know, the special effects are fine. It's a very yeah. admirable film, all those things, blah, blah, blah. Yep. So the negatives, though, there's too many... Oh, you just heard about all this, all these people running around, you know, like there's just too many plots, which could be fine. It's easy to follow. I mean, obviously, you yeah, know, it's not hard but the to follow, it's just, right, you but, don't need to follow quite so much. Right. And the thing is, there's actually not big payoffs when these, no. when there's a res- concern, these, like I said, I, I want people to enjoy the film, so I don't want to spoil it, but all these things that we just mentioned, some of them, they're resolved in minutes where some of these should be very climactic. It could be really great caper. You know what I mean? Like, running around and it's like it's just re- easily resolved i'm like if you compare it to the original movie right they move into the house the maitlands who are gina davis and alec baldwin yes. don't want people in their house at that point because it's theirs they're ghosts they don't know how to deal with it you know and so the whole thing is they want to get the people out of the house so they try to haunt them and then that yep. doesn't work and then beetlejuice gets involved and then there's like there's so there's only one plot thread throughout the entire yep. first movie, really. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is they move into this house, and all the ghosts are trying to get them out of the house. And, but there's only one thread to follow, so everything builds off of that one plot. Yeah. Line. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this movie, since there are three or four different plot lines, and they don't ever converge and become one plot line, yeah. they all have to get resolved very, very, very quickly, so you can then resolve the next thing. Right. And, it feels a little rushed at points. Yeah, and I and that's and to me that's unfortunate because I don't know how you felt. I felt the beginning of this movie felt a bit slow. The pacing's a bit off. It's not terrible, but it's a bit. I feel like the movie doesn't actually pick up until, uh, until Jenny see. Ortega until Jenny Ortega actually gets into. I feel like the movie all of a sudden the pace was like bam, bam, bam because that that didn't happen to like 50, 50 minutes into the movie. Yeah, about halfway. We, we see we see Beetlejuice. But at the appropriate time, like maybe like a half hour. I don't know. Goes with the you know? most stuff, right? Until you get yeah. into the real heavy Beetlejuice yeah. stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of buildup, and it takes a while to get through it. I, I agree with that. Yeah. So I think that hurt the film. Um, 
and like I said, like PJ and I were saying before, you don't need these characters. I really, I think if you don't need Monica Bellucci at all, um, I don't think you'd even need Justin Theroux. You don't need, you don't need this movie to have Justin. She didn't need a love interest. Right. Lady. She could have just, you know, in my opinion, and, I, and PJ, because PJ, I spoke before this, before recorded, so I want to honor PJ. And I think it, I agree. You need Willem to focus. You need, you need someone else. Uh, right. So I and think could have been a good foil for everything. Yeah, exactly. You could have just kept it that General Ortega gets tricked into going into the afterlife. Lydia right. needs Beetlejuice's help. So now Lydia yep. and Beetlejuice go into the afterlife. And yep. now this cop, Willem Dafoe, is just trying to get the alive people out of the afterlife. Yeah. He's chasing them down. And yeah, you don't like, need anything else. It, yeah, just like a fugitive. Like, like the yeah. fugitive. Exactly. That's what I yeah. had here. Exactly. You just yep. need Jenna Ortega and the boyfriend guy going into And then she needs to get Beetlejuice. I only know one nutcase to get myself <laughs> back into I need to get reunite with him you know and like you said I think they could have done you didn't need Justin Theroux and, and the, the movie would have been I think you could you could have just built it up more and you could also focus on which I thought was very I thought was definitely anticlimactic was uh, you know, a little spoiler here Jenna Ortega does reunite with her father and I'm like it was just like like it did fall flat flat I'm like I'm like uh, you know, I just felt like this for me. I guess what makes me like I didn't hate the film. I just find it, it is for me a little disappointing because like I feel like Tim Burton's like he's back. He's not like he's not doing a Dumbo. He's not doing a Disney thing. This is him back at his roots. You know, and I'm right. like, this is I'm like you're too good for this, man. I know so you're, you're past your prime, but you could have this could have been a lot better. It's a, for me, it's a, a little bit of a missed opportunity here. You know. It, I think for me, it kind of just balances out. It's not awful, and it's definitely not a great movie. It's just kind of right in the middle. But it could have been super yeah. great if he would have just eliminated it and then punched all these things up, you know, I in my opinion. It, so in my, I don't disagree with that. I think I liked it more than you did, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. definitely think I did. I found a lot to enjoy. A big part of the reason I liked it as much as I did, um, two big reasons. One, Michael Keaton crushed it. Oh, absolutely. Fantastic in this movie. Mm-hmm. You're working with a professional here! I think this is by no stretch a better movie than the original, but I think he might have actually been better in this than the original. Um, I He had a lot to do in this movie. He only has like 15 minutes of screen time in the first movie. Yep. He doesn't have that much more time yeah, in this He movie. might have maybe 20 minutes in this yeah, one. He, mm-hmm. But I feel like more of the movie rests on his shoulders in this one than it did in the first one. Like, he really... Yeah, no, no question. You know, like... Mm-hmm. They best basically. I feel like they went into this movie and basically said, "If Michael Keaton can't carry this film, we can't do it." And he oh, really, no he really carried it in a big way. So he yeah. was just great. And and for me, also, like I said, Willem Dafoe for me, I thought was brilliant no. in this movie. Yeah, like so those I said, two things make it for me made the movie. Um, so I like both of those characters. I definitely think the plot wasn't the strongest. I think it looked great. I think I like that it was easy to follow. Like you said, they could have done more with it. Um, Mm -hmm. I think, and I'm going to spoil this because it is maybe for me, the funniest joke in the movie. Oh, Uh, and, and I still sometimes think about it and chuckle when they die, they go into the afterlife. And then when they move on, they take a train to the, to the beyond or whatever they call it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's called the soul train. Yes. Yes. They say it and you chuckle, you're like, ah, the soul train, I get it until they show you the soul train. And it's straight up them doing Soul Train from the TV show with yeah. dancing and everything. <laughs> right, right. I thought that shit was hysterical. I laughed out loud when they did that. It is from, um, I thought that was great. I, yeah. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, mm-hmm. There is a lot to like in this movie. You just have to sift through the other stuff. And that's, yeah. that's the part that's disappointing. I yeah. think this movie is 100% worth seeing in the theaters. I was not upset that I spent any money on this movie at all. I, I was fine with the money I spent to see it. Like I liked it that much. It could have been better. Right. And it's sad that it wasn't as good as it could have been. But some of these side characters really were the best parts that Bob is great. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You know but he, I mean? like, but he, Bob is the, for me, he's like the shrunken head. Uh, yeah. Dude. Um, yeah. And those things are that works. I don't think he's his character. Uh, you need in the film. He's a good comic relief. Yeah. You need him. And then, yeah. the, you know, um, he he was great. I just I, like I said before, a lot, a lot of these like, you like I said, PJ, you and I just talked about. We can do a rewrite. All they had to do is make it about yeah. Jenna, 
and her boyfriend, right? And you make the, you make her boyfriend. He ends up becoming the villain, folks. Okay, um, and like I said, you get during the after, and she gets Beetlejuice, and then you have Willem Dafoe kind of following. That's all you needed to do. Yeah. And uh, and PJ for you, I'm just kind of curious. I don't know if this is a writing thing, or it, it's a a directing thing, or a, a performance thing. I can't put my finger on it. I felt sometimes the jokes didn't land, or. Uh, no, more like we talk, we complain about like the the Marvel movies. Those are really action movies. We know that, right? Right. They turning them into comedies. Yeah. This is a comedy. I'm surprised they didn't beef up the dramatic moments and then undercut it with, with a, the, with and the they joke. didn't really do yeah. that. They really and, didn't. Because um, when she, when Lydia finds out that her father died, she was just kind of like, wait, what? Dad died? Like she should be like, oh my god. And then, you know, she kind of she. It's like they 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 did the undercut, but uh, maybe it is a performance. Uh, the winner, Winona Ryder didn't convey didn't any kind know. of hurt. Yes, exactly. Thank you. And, and I was like, that yeah, was a I great moment right there. I think she made a choice because if you remember in the original Beetlejuice, she was like, a, she was what, 16 or whatever she was. And she was supposed to be like an emotionless, like goth teenager. And they didn't do enough to show any character growth for her, I guess. It, right. And as a 50-year-old Lydia Dietz, it doesn't play as or as authentic as it did when she was a 16-year-old Lydia Dietz. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think I, even a 16-year-old, if you found your father died, I think you'd still be, you know, especially the way that he passed away. <laughs> I'm not right, going right. to share that. I think I mean, what I'm trying to say is it would have made good comedy, you know, like, look, I'm not a comedian Something. here, but I think we know that, you know, you have this thing and then and it would have worked really well. I just feel like there was a lot of missed opportunities with that. I'm like... I feel like I feel like that's another. Thing. I feel like the movie could have, actually could have been a little bit funnier. Beetlejuice yeah, I, is great. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is funny. Is Willem great. Dafoe is funny, but everyone else, Catherine O'Hara, she's funny. I feel like at, par- I at she, times. Yeah, I just felt like I almost you know, feel like she couldn't find the character again. I, f- I I think a lot of it is about like I think you just said it, PJ. It's like a little bit maybe maybe chemistry on set. Maybe they didn't know how to push him. You know, like whenever Ryan's right, not a, a she's not a comedy. She's not a comedian. Right. You know what I mean? You know, so she's surrounded by comedians in films. For now, for her to right. do it might be a little bit difficult. But I feel like some of the humor doesn't land because uh, they just don't have the chemistry or the timings. Something's off. I, like I like I said, there's another point. Like I said too, like when Jenna Ortega reunites with her father, like that should be a comedy right there. Like oh, or like really dramatic. Oh my god, I'm so happy to see you. Like you know, how come you can't see mom? Blah, 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 blah. You know, they never resolve they that. They actually resolve that. Right, that was but then the biggest miss of the whole movie for me is they set that up, and you think there's going to be a resolution, and right. then there just isn't. But you exactly what I'm saying. Like, how could Tim Burton like sit down in the final cut and and say that? Like, I just and, and check that off. I don't want to say, oh, Michael, oh, it's a comedy. You know, I, like they say, Mike, you always say a movies at its best when it knows what it is. I'm like, yeah, and I think. Yeah, I think this movie. Maybe <laughs> you can't do that. That's not an excuse. To, you gotta, yeah. If you're gonna build that shit up, you know, or make a big punchline out of it, that would have been great, you know. Um, but yeah, it just felt like, I guess, some of those things just didn't work for me. Uh, it re- I think I said it really, you know, hurt. Like I said, I couldn't. I just get into other negative things, PJ. I just thought if you're, if you, what you agree. So one of the things I loved um, is that. When a writer, Lydia, she can see dead people, right? Yes. And she, the only time she sees that I can recollect is like slight spoiler here. She goes to the to the bathroom at one point, like at her office, just making life easy here. Mm-hmm. And she sees someone and she's talking to them. Throughout the rest of the film, I would like to her to see other dead people. Like that would have been funny. Yeah, I, that was I great. Like to have seen a bit more of that. I mean, we yeah. know that she saw. She sees a couple throughout the movie, a, a handful. But not any real meaningful way. Uh, besides that one person in the back, I can't the, remember. The, you know? the, the kid's parents, the boyfriend. She sees them. Yeah. Oh my god! Right. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. She, so like right. she sees them. She sees okay. the. She sees the mm-hmm. one in the very beginning when we first find out she has a TV show. She sees them. Yeah. She sees mm-hmm. very few. They don't make it a, a. They don't make it a big point. And that I guess. Been, I guess it's been... genetic. I didn't realize seeing ghosts was a genetic thing, but I guess yeah. It is. But I felt like it could have been funny for her to like. I think in the movie True Romance, where he always sees, you know, uh, Christian Slade always sees like the the uh, Elvis, right. you know, yeah. and 
I felt like it would have been funny if she could have ran into other. They didn't have to be celebrities. They could just be other dead people, you know, within town, you know. And I almost kind like of her giving her advice, like, "Hey, this is how you should try to connect with your daughter." And it has like someone with like a, you know, a harpoon through their head. You know, it could have been funny. Right. You know, I think it would have been interesting for her to see some dead people that where she doesn't know if people are necessarily dead or alive. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And you could have had some jokes and gags out of that. Like she thinks she's talking to a real person until, you know. Maybe they're behind a desk or something, and then they stand up and they're half their body. Things like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> play a few right. jokes a little bit. Like, she doesn't even know if they're dead or not until she can figure something. They mm-hmm. didn't do much with They didn't do much with her at all. I, I really thought she was the flattest part of the movie, unfortunately. Yeah, Which yeah, is a, yeah. I really like Winona Ryder. I, I, I think yeah. she's a great actress. I, I, I think she's great in Stranger Things. Um, I just feel like, Again, the same thing like I said with with the mother. It's almost like she couldn't find the character again. Like there was just yeah. mm-hmm. something off. Maybe they didn't have enough right. time to film. I don't know. But yeah. something was a little off with each of the returning characters, except for Beetlejuice, where you're like, this doesn't. I don't know. Right. Uh, well, I think there's nothing for her to do when, in, in a weird way. Right. That's why I think they would have emphasized her relationship with Jen a little bit more. I know at the end they, you know, like spoiler, yeah. they become close. Of course. You know, uh, but. If right. they were to really beef that up yeah. and eliminate these other characters, you had time to develop that and make it more dramatic and make it funnier. You know, as I must say it's supposed to be a um, tearjerker. It could have been <laughs> funnier, you know, and make it more, you know. Like, what's her face? I, um, Jenna Ortega? Her? Delia, the, the mother. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. As much, she's a great actress, and I like the character. I almost felt like you could have taken her out of the movie and – Jenna Ortega's character should feel about Lydia Dietz the way Lydia felt about Delia. And instead of it being all about her weird art stuff that the yeah. you know, mother was about in the first one, in this one, Lydia talks to ghosts on TV yeah. and her daughter thinks she's crazy for it. And you have that same sort of dynamic that Lydia had with yeah. Delia. Only mm-hmm. now it's with, it's with, uh, what's her face? Astrid, the Jenna Ortega and Lydia. I, I, yeah. Again, Taking out some of these characters tight would have tightened up the movie a little bit. Right. Like the father could still have died. That could still yeah, be yeah, back to the to the yeah. house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give mm-hmm. the mother a cameo. You didn't need her to be a main character in the whole movie. I, there are things they could have done to tr- to streamline what was happening, to make it a tighter film. Um yep. I, I love the way they brought back in Banana Boat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was done well. I thought that was a nice uh you know, a nice homage to the original movie. Um, you know, I, there is a. I think there's a lot of positives in the movie too. We're talking a lot about the negatives, but right. I, I, I think on a positive, you know, we spoke about the acting being well. We spoke about Michael Keaton being well. They, they, I, the movie has heart to it though. And in, in a yeah, like I guess it's a very admirable film. Yeah, it's, like it's, you watch the movie, you can feel that Tim Burton made this movie. Not because he was looking for a cash grab. I, I don't get the impression. No, I don't get that at all. Yeah. He made this movie because he felt like he had a story to tell with this character again. And you can feel that while you're watching the movie. It, it's, it's authentic. Yeah. It, it feels right. authentic. It right. just has a few misses. Um, I really like the scene in the church where they go back. Beetlejuice's big haunt is always making people sing. Like that's what they did in the first movie. Right. Mm-hmm. And I thought that scene worked really well when he had them singing. I, I thought that was very funny. I, I enjoyed that. I, I like the stuff that mirrors the first movie. I, I forget who said it. I, there was, I think, maybe it was George Lucas. It rhymes. Right, yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, it I, rhymes. I, I like that scene, too, when they they sing at this one point. PJ said, for me, I felt the scene actually went on too long, where I was like, all right, wrap up the <laughs> wrap up this joke, because I felt it went on a little too long. Yeah. Um, I, I like the joke about the social media. They all had their phones out. And, yeah, that and- was good. There's a piece where they get sucked into a phone, and it's a very brief. Again, it rhymes. It very briefly reminds you of Alec Baldwin's character with the long face. Yeah, yep. elongated mm-hmm. face. Again, like it gives you a little bit of like, oh, I remember that. They explain why Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis aren't in it. Yeah. They don't spend a lot of time on it. Those characters don't need to be in the movie. I thought it was nice that they gave them an explanation. You had to. You, you had, had to, that. and they did it. It was fine. You know, you see the bridge where everything happens in the first one. When you see this stuff, there's a sense of nostalgia. And it brings you back to the original movie. And, and, and that stuff feels good while you're watching it. It's very fan service at points. 
but it feels right. it feels like it wasn't done in a non-authentic right. way. And and I like the way I like those parts. I like those little moments. And for me, those little moments kept me into the movie during the parts where you said it drags on or like we should have cut this. I agree with all those things, but those little those little moments, those little pops. Those little moments thousand. work. Those yeah. moments work. I I think I think uh, when it comes to Gina Davis and Al Boland's character, I in, in a perfect world, I would like for them to almost if they left a letter saying like, "Hey, you know," because I just Liddy just says one line like, "Oh, they found a loophole." And I guess they moved yeah. to the great beyond. I would have liked maybe like some kind of letter saying like, "Hey, um, maybe left the book of deceased for them," you know, right. uh, something. something like that. But they didn't do it. It's fine. They're not. That's not. The, that's not even a problem. Yeah. My other problem with the, okay. by PJ, I'm just kind of curious. This this scene felt like an eternity, but it mirrors one of your favorite films. So going back to Monica Bellucci, so mm-hmm. when she's, uh, I'll say she comes back to life to make, yep. she's she's all into pieces, she's in pieces basically. Yep. And um, uh, she's literally staples herself with a staple gun back together. Yep. Like PJ said, I'm sure people seen the trailer. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, she looks like Sally from uh, – Nightmare Before Christmas, but I felt that scene went on forever. Oh I was my like, God. Like, Oof. We got the point. Oof. She's putting herself <laughs> back together. Women. I don't know what her problem is. And this, oh, the reason why I say it, it, um, I think it didn't, for me, it wasn't as dramatic. I think they could have made it shorter for sure, maybe even oh, yeah. funnier. I didn't really find it very, like, which I felt was kind of odd. I'm like Tim, I, I, you know, I'm not a direct one. Tim, you, you know. Anyway, it reminded me of when she on um, Michelle Pfeiffer turns into Catwoman. Yes. And yes. that, and if you remember Batman Returns, Michelle Pfeiffer, there's so much build up. She doesn't just turn into she's not Catwoman the first second. You know, you see her go into that. Yeah. You know, man, it's that descent. You know, she, you know, she gets hurt, and then she, you know, she gets the, you know, the leather, the latex out, whatever you want to call it. She's like stitching it. She's like kind of sticking her tongue out. She's like sewing. Yep. She puts the thing through her hands, like very sexy, and yep. you kind of see her that transformation. So when we just when we see Monica for the first time, Monica Bellucci, you don't know who she is. I mean, we know from the trailer who she is, but like she's just this bitch, <laughs> you know, yeah, who's no cut up, mean. you know. So it's not like when she's putting you back together, you're like, oh my. It's not like T one thousand when you see him like coming right, back it's together. Just a scene. Right. And you're like, all right, I get it. Right. We have to get her in the movie somehow. It mm-hmm. looked cool enough. It was shot well, but yeah, it doesn't yeah, have any I emotion wish... behind it. And yeah. the, I'm like, I agree. I'm like, if we could just put this bitch together just a little bit quicker and move on with it. <laughs> I, I mean, that that would have been great. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I agree that that was a a very right. long winded uh, scene, and also like so much happened. There's a scene in the movie where they go to a an afterlife dry cleaner and you just like you did that didn't need that can we just cut this shit out and move fast they need it yeah like and she and she just puts on like she puts on a, a wedding dress i'm like you don't even need that scene you know no. and you like why would she even kill that. like right like, she's looking for beetlejuice why would you kill like they should have had her going for like one of the things i i wish they would have done the film was like had beetlejuice have some like her like like i wish they somehow like i don't know a montage like him like in the movie, he's been like thinking about Lydia for all these years. I'm gonna be like, he hasn't tried to enter or worked with any other person. Right. And I wish he almost had like a Rolodex. And she went back to his former clients, like, where is this dude? I'm looking right. for him, you know. Instead of just killing some rando. Yeah. So it was really, a vehicle to give Will yeah. one to investigate is really exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I know. Yeah, yeah. But it was just like, again, that was a long scene of her going into the dry cleaner. Finding the dress, killing the dry cleaner, turning the dress black, doing all this shit. Like, oh my God, enough's Mm -hmm. enough. There were little things like that. Although I will say, the look of the afterlife is so cool. Yeah, yeah. They nailed that. They Mm -hmm. nailed it. You don't Mm -hmm. see much of the afterlife in the original movie. No, 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 no. no. What's her face? Though that old lady works. And she's like, take a number. Like, you see. (laughs) Never (laughs) trust the living. Yeah. 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 And then the football team keeps going, I'm not your coach. Like, right. Yeah. That's you see that lady, you don't see her because that lady's got to be dead because she was dead then. Yeah, she yeah. Was old then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, that's all you really got from the afterlife in the original movie, and then like the desert or whatever where yeah. the sand was. All that stuff works. All that, that stuff, stuff works. works great. It doesn't look like the cartoon. I thought maybe it would look more like the cartoon, and right. it really didn't. Um, but it looked great. I wish they would do a movie there. Like I said, give me Willem Dafoe. Right. Just as an afterlife investigator or something, and I would watch the shit out of it. 
All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, folks, that's kind of the I think that's pretty much it. Right. I'm I'm not not going to super spoilers. I want people to, you know, see it. Yeah, I would. I would definitely recommend seeing it in the theater. I, I mean, I wasn't disappointed leaving there. There were parts that did fall flat. There were parts that I was like, oh, we could have left this out. Overall, I I really did have a good time watching it, and I would recommend seeing it in a theater. Um, mm-hmm. It's you're not going to get too many more moments with these kind of characters that we grew up with. Yeah. Look, Michael Keaton is a great actor, but he's not going to be in a a really leading starring role anymore. He's a, he's not. That's mm-hmm. not what he does anymore. There's only so many chances you're going to get to see an actor like that have a big opening. And it's worth yeah. seeing him on the big screen in a role that he made famous that he does still does great. Like, yes, all those reasons. I, I think it's worth seeing in the theater mm-hmm. uh, for me. So if you really love the first one, definitely see it in theaters. You know, if, if you know, um, I would say have ex- expectations low if you see it in theaters. But if you're a person who is like kind of like, oh, I like the first one. It's OK. It doesn't turn me on. Then just wait for streaming, honestly. Uh, don't waste your time. I don't think it's a must see in theaters for for the casual fan, you know. Mm-hmm. I would say. Um, but PJ, what would you give it out of ten? I would honestly. I mean, as much as we had a lot of negatives to pick out, I mm-hmm. left that theater feeling like it was an eight. Okay. Okay. I okay. Really felt like it was, <laughs> yeah, I really liked the first one though. So, like I said, it's probably not my favorite movie, but I give the first one like a nine five out of ten. Yeah, really love the first one, and this isn't as good as the first one. It, no, no, oh, no, 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 <laughs> definitely not. Um, I agree. I love the first one. I do. For this one, though, as a, uh, I might be rough here, so I'm keeping. I'm just keeping it true blue. I think there's. It's. It, it's like I said. It's like a. It's for me. It's kind of evens out between the positives and negatives. So maybe like a five out of ten. If you wow, for me, that's, if that's it, cause it's. Because it's a really an average film, like I said. It, it's these missed opportunities really hurt. I mean, those those pointless plot lines really bring it down for me. So I give it a five. I, I if you really want to break cons- balls, yeah. you know, like yeah. if I really want to break I balls, I get coming from with it. I, I get where you're coming from because mm. if it wasn't a Beetlejuice, if this wasn't Beetlejuice, and this was yeah. like. I don't know, any other bug in any other beverage. I don't know. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It would not be as good. Like if you had if you didn't have the connection to the original movie and the nostalgia from the original movie, just based on the plot, I agree with you hundred percent. I think Michael Keaton and the nostalgia pieces and uh, and all of those other moments, Willem Dafoe, for me it really bumped it up. But if this was like like I said, if this wasn't a continuation and it was just a standalone yeah. movie, it yeah. would not work. Is It wouldn't work. Yeah. I, agree with mm-hmm. you. I think yeah, yeah. the nostalgia mm-hmm. really has a big yeah. piece in why this movie yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't see someone like a casual fan, mm-hmm. like re watching this dozens and dozens of times. You know, maybe it's on TV, you might leave it on, you know, kind of thing. But it's, it's fine. It's fine. For me, it's fine. I, I could see this becoming like, so during Halloween, right? We always oh, yeah. watch like, Halloween-esque movies, mm-hmm. right? They do sometimes yep. they're on TV. They do like the, the twenty nights of Halloween or whatever they do on those yeah. days. I always watch certain movies during Halloween season. We always throw on Nightmare Before Christmas. We always throw on Beetlejuice. We always throw on horror movies. I can see myself watching Beetlejuice and Beetlejuice Beetlejuice back to back every year going forward on Halloween uh, during Halloween season. I will watch this movie once a year going forward. I, yeah. I will watch it that much. I, I'm not going to watch it a hundred times a year. But I, yeah, I think that's I, fair. I think that's fair to say. It's for the holiday season. season for the ho- I'll, I agree. I will. I will say. I will. I agree with that, um, for sure. So PJ, I want to read you this quote from Tim Burton himself. I think okay. it's really interesting. So, um, so Tim was basically gonna, uh, as I know him, Tim. So Tim was about to like this man was like gonna retire, and. He had like a very stressful time working with Disney. I think he made the the I think the Alice in Wonderland are actually a part of Disney. Yeah. And, and the last one he made was Dumbo. I didn't. I never saw Dumbo. Actually, I love the original cartoon, but I never saw the the uh, live action thing. Have you seen it? Real quick. Have just, you seen just pieces of it? Okay. Okay. So this I is what br- I didn't. Lo- what I saw, I didn't love. So I never went and watched the whole thing. <laughs> All right. So I, I just want to read this out loud. So this is what Tim Burton said recently. He goes. In terms of working with Disney, my history is that I started out there. Burton said, I was hired and fired like several times for my, throughout my career there. The thing about Dumbo 
is that's why I think my days with Disney are done. Burton continues saying, I realized that I was Dumbo <laughs> and that I was working in this horrible big circus and I need to escape. That movie is quite autobiographical at a certain <laughs> level. Wow. wow. I Dude. mean, he was about thinking about retiring. It like burnt him out working with wow. them. I can believe it. I can believe later it. Later in the article, he said it was so stressful making, I guess, particularly Dumbo. And I guess previously with those films, just saying like he felt just exhausted making them. And just like he I guess he felt he didn't have creative freedom or right. he felt it was just. I'm just summarizing here what he said. It just felt it burnt the man out. I could believe it. <laughs> and then when he, I didn't. My wife saw it the Wednesday. She thought it was great. So I don't know if you he did every episode or he yeah. multiple episodes. I, I watched. I've watched every episode of that show and thought it was a fantastic TV show. Right. I don't know how much his involvement was in it though. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like that TV show kind of like brought him back, him, brought him back, yeah. and um, I'm happy he, you know. Came back to Beetlejuice. Do I think this is his best effort? I'm not saying he didn't put that. I shouldn't say that. Do I think I think he put effort into this? He did. Sure. I believe he did. I have no question. Um, I th- think he, like I said, we could have maybe sat down with the writers and said, but how could we make this a little bit tighter? And what could we tr- trim the fat? And what can we yep. do to? So um, anyway, what I'm saying is, I think hopefully this film will bring him back to this his realm. He needs yep. to be back in his element. He needs to be. He ain't. Should be no fucking. <laughs> but I think his next movie has like to be an original. I don't yeah. want to see Edward Scissorhands too. No. You know yeah. what I mean? like, <laughs> I... <laughs> right. Don't be surprised, PJ. I, I would not. Shocked. I wouldn't but be that's shocked. Not what I want to because you know Johnny Depp is looking for his comeback role. You I know? know. And that, right. but that would be it. We said it first here, folks. If it comes yeah. back, you know, it might yeah, happen. I, no, don't I rule think, it out. Don't I'm rule it out. Rule it out. But my God, can you imagine what that movie? Oh, would be? I just can't. I just can't. But if they, if this movie is is popular enough and rejuvenates his his love for film, and he comes up with something in this vein, uh, an Edward Scissorhands like tone, a Beetlejuice yes. tone, but something yes. original, I, that's what I think he needs at this point. A big, mm-hmm. a big hit that is completely a Tim Burton vehicle, but something mm-hmm. we've never seen before. That's what I want to see from Tim Burton next. Or yeah. if not, give me another Batman movie with Tim right. Burton. Right, like they, right. Like if they do a Batman Beyond movie, but have Tim Burton make the Batman Beyond movie with Michael Keaton as old Batman, yeah. and then cast someone as new Batman, whoever. I think I would love to see that if we're going to revisit something he's already done more than I would rather see him revisit. Like we get a Big Fish 2. What are we doing? There's, yeah, yeah. His movies no, don't I agree. Need sequels. He makes movies that don't need sequels. So let's yeah. get a new thing from yes, him. I agree. I agree. I agree, PJ. Well said. I think what's next for Beetlejuice? Obviously, I don't think they're going to make a Beetlejuice 3. I would if they like do, it. they have to call it Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah. to make the movie at this point. Mm-hmm. I think what you can do, I for me personally, if you were going to make a, uh, let's say, a, a trilogy, let's say, make it an animated film, have, you know, yeah. well, and make it more, definitely more kid friendly. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, if I had to. Um, and that's, I think I think supposedly they they, uh, they uh, what they call I guess reissued the uh, the original cartoon onto streaming somewhere. Yeah, I think it's so. I'm, so I'm curious if they're going to revitalize that series. That'd be great, you know. Um, well, I just watched the first episode of that since they put it on streaming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's tough. It's oh, tough it's hard. It hasn't. It's, it it's, it's didn't uh, age well. <laughs> I was watching. I'm like, this is just awful. I don't know how we watched it as right. kids. Right, it was, I it loved was, it as a kid. I, I remember loved the it boys. Too, he had a car that turned into like a dog or something like that. It was great. Mm-hmm. As an adult, so, doesn't hold up. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I I could definitely see them making it an animated series, a, a new yeah. one. You know, um, or just set something in the world of Beetlejuice. It doesn't have to be a yeah. Beetlejuice movie. That yeah. afterlife is ripe for something. Yeah, you can do. Like you said, a detective kind of thing. Maybe not Willem Dafoe, but someone else that could work. Yeah. Um, or, or just like. This is a probably what? Is this a Warner Brothers movie? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, make a max four or five eight, mini, like, TV series. Like, five, four or five episodes only. It doesn't have to be a long show. Just one plot, whether it's Willem Dafoe or someone else, it just takes place in the afterworld. People will eat that shit up. Yep. I agree. Mm-hmm. And I did, I, I knew this, but didn't know this. So, I, I don't know if it was ever on Broadway, but they had, like, a Beetlejuice, like, stage show, like a 
yeah, the comedy the, musical, and I think the travels Broadway show, and it was fantastic. Yeah, and I I don't know if they uh, maybe this will bring it back to a permanent spot, you know, in the city because we ha- I love the back. I think we talked about this in the past. I like the Back to the Future. I mean, it's not a perfect I saw the theater Beatles show. But I love the, the oh. Beetlejuice show was great. I think it was better than Back to the Future. Um, wow. Yeah, and mm. I and I really like Back to the Future yeah. a lot. The the Beetlejuice Broadway show was was is great. It, the guy who it, does it is is great. Right. Yeah, it's basically like a it's the telling of the first film, right? It's yeah, not they a diff- have to change like they always yeah, do. Yeah, no, right, I understand that. Right. But it's a musical, though, right? Yeah. Music- yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I really hope this movie will, I don't know if, that, I don't know if that, that traveling Broadway show is still around. Maybe hope maybe we'll bring it back, because I think this will. This is the time to capitalize. <laughs> so, yeah. um, anyway, just to end things off, I, uh, I sent PJ a question, and the question yeah. was, would be, who would win in a Tim Burton fight in terms of Tim Burton's characters? And this is who I had in the in a, in a battle royale. So you have the 1989 Batman, that's uh, with Michael Keaton. You have Pee Wee Herman, Edward Scissorhands, Ed Wood, that's like a, the director Johnny Depp yeah. played. Uh, you have one of the Martians from Mars Attack. And one of the guys goes, bah, 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 bah. The, the, <laughs> those guys. Uh, of course, Mr. Beetlejuice. Um, Willy Wonka, that's another Johnny Depp yeah. character, and another John, or another Johnny Depp character I put in here <laughs> was the Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. So they're all in the same ring. They're all fighting the same yeah. arena. So um, all right, I, I gave this a lot of thought. I gave it a lot of thought. And here's here's how I broke it down. Okay. So, Mad Hatter, although not the Mad Hatter in this in this version, is a Batman villain, and Batman has beaten oh. Mad Hatter cleanly. So right, right off the bat, Mad Hatter can't win because Batman's going to beat him. Right, touche. Ed, Ed Wood is just a dude. Yeah, he's not right? going to... So he's not going <laughs> to win. He's just a dude with nothing special about him. He's not going to win. Okay, so then that leaves us with uh, with Batman, Pee-wee, Edward Scissorhands, uh, Beetlejuice, and Willy Wonka. Right. So then I'm thinking right off the bat, as much as I love that Pee-wee Herman movie, again, he's just a dude, and I... I <laughs> And he's very childlike, Pee Wee Herman. Right. <laughs> and I feel like Willy Wonka is going to be able to beat Pee Wee Herman because anyone right. that's basically childlike dies right. in that fashion. <laughs> For some reason, in my mind, I feel like right before they're going to kill him, he's like, one last request. And he does a dent, <laughs> dent, the tequila. That's, in my mind, I've had that. And then they that smoke. Could be. Right. So I think, I think that Willy Wonka takes out Pee Wee. Right. We know that Ed Wood's just a goner. So that right. leaves us now with <laughs> Batman, Edward Scissorhands, and Beetlejuice, and the Martian. Right. Because um, Willy Wonka, at the end of the day, is still just a human. Beetlejuice right. is going to take out every one of the humans. They're not. You don't gonna... think Willy Wonka and his, I guess, with his schnozenberries turn maybe Batman into a giant blueberry? It's not going to happen. I, I don't think have... Batman would eat the blueberries. I think Batman. <laughs> at the end of the day, this is coming down to between Beetlejuice, the Martian, and Batman. Right. I've seen Batman take out Martians in the comic books. So right. Batman, oh. So I gotta believe Batman can take out a Martian. Yes. So then it becomes Beetlejuice versus Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how does Edward? How does Edward die? How, how does Edward, Edward die? die? I, I mean, I just feel like Batman's gonna have something in that utility belt that's gonna make that motherfucker rusty. Right. He's, yeah. He's yeah. not gonna be able to move <laughs> the scissors. He's gonna like. <laughs> Or a magnet or something, like the bat magnet or something. Right. This is kinda this is really messed up. I don't know why I'm like I guess I'm a sick person. For some reason I just picture Batman pushing Edward Sands Edward Sands into a pool like a <laughs> You can't swim. You can't swim. <laughs> Could yeah. you imagine him in oh my god. Um uh, but I agree. It would come down mano y mano. Keaton versus Keaton. Yep. Ghost with the most versus the dark knight. So PJ who would who would uh? This is a good battle because either way, battle. either way you can go either way because they both. I, Batman has fought supernatural dudes. Yeah. I mean, Beetlejuice at one point was a regular man, you know. So and he has a you know some weaknesses. You can just say his name. So yeah. you know, it's a little, uh, you know, and Batman just at the end of the day, he is just a mortal, a smart, it's a, a smart uh, mortal, but just a mortal. Man. Yes. And he doesn't have any sidekicks at this point because Michael Keaton didn't have a Robin. No. So if he doesn't have anyone to help him, I think it might be Beetlejuice that takes it because he can just, like, magic right. this guy and do whatever he wants, you know, cover yeah, his yeah, mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, you know, he can turn him into an actual bat. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. 
gosh. You know, mm-hmm. he, he can make the cape come alive, and then the cape is battling Batman. I'd love to right. see it play out. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think I give it to Beetlejuice. Yeah, for me, I went either way. I'll just say Batman just so we could be different. I feel like somehow he would outsmart him in some capacity. I would love, like, like the Oscars, they always do, like, a skit, you know, like, during the... If they could have Michael Keaton play both roles, imagine if they, like, fought each other. They play, like, a chess match or, like, they do a spoof of, like, like, the Dark Knight with Joker. But you have, you know, Batman... I mean, Beetlejuice at the table. Oh my God, that'd be really good comedy going. It. SNL skit. That yeah. would be great. Speaking of Michael Keaton, before we we wrap up, did you hear he wants to change his name? Yeah, I can't believe that. So his, I didn't realize his real name wasn't Michael Keaton. I yeah, I knew that. I knew that. I knew Michael that. Michael Douglas, and they wouldn't let him be Michael Douglas, so he picked Keaton. So now he wants to be Michael Keaton Douglas. So he yeah. go back to having his real name. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I get it. You know, you want to do something with your real name, mm-hmm. but you're too far into your career. Do you expect yeah, anyone yeah. to ever call you anything but Michael Keaton at this point? Yeah, yeah. No, for Way sure. Way too far into his career for this. Um, so, yeah, folks. Um, at the end of the day, PJ and I recommend it. You know, if you're like, if you're not a bigger super fan, don't wait for streaming. But if you're a, you're a legit fan, you enjoy the first one, see the, see, go see it in theaters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're a fan of the first one, you're not going to leave this one feeling like it was a waste of your time or anything. Yeah, it's not. I didn't find it's not. My biggest fear was going to be cringy. I'm like, oh my god, dear no, god, that really was cringe. And no, at one point, it was never cringe. Um, even those parts that I said that last a little bit, a little too long, I wasn't like, you know, my skin wasn't crawling. I was like, all right, can kind of wrap this up. But like we said, um, it's fine. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and like PJ said, I love what he said. Hopefully, this will lead Tim Burton to writing or. Creating films that are original, you know, or um, after this, no sequels, no live action, none of that nonsense. Um, back to us, back to the Tim Burton realm. Yeah, of the universe something so. brand new, even yeah. if it's not live action. If he does another like stop motion movie, yeah, exactly. don't give me Nightmare Before Christmas too. Don't give me Corpse Bride too. But come right. up with something new. Right. I would love to see him do. And this movie proves he can still do stop motion in a way that's very entertaining. So, yep. um, no spoilers, but you'll see it if you see the movie. You'll see what I'm talking about. Definitely do another one of those movies and then do another live action movie of all new original stuff. And let's have a second coming of Burton. Yeah, we need it. We need it. But uh, PJ, 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 <laughs> you didn't disappear. Um, but no, great stuff, man. And folks, uh, thanks for listening. Same time, same table. Have a good one. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Boys and girls, lunchtime is over. For more information, visit their website at coolkidslunchtable.podbean.com. Follow the boys on all social media platforms. Just search Cool Kids Lunch Table Podcast. Now get to class before you get detention.